clog up, does he? I always do, Tanya. Never do, does he? I always do. Tanya, is this a major? I've, I've had a big day. I'm coming, Kate. I've just want to put this stuff away. I... Petey's policy. They set up my review. I won't be a sec. I'll get you home, I bet. Maybe check it and we're out of here. I don't want to get stuck on the motorway. Yeah, I just want to finish this. Come on, I want to go. Yeah. I'll meet you down at the bike. All right, babe. Clear desk policy. Bess is going to hand it to you, yeah, piece of work. Yeah, well, I just got to get rid of this stuff. Oh, forget him. Run away with me. I need to pee. That bike of his always makes me want to go. Anyone go for a drink? I'll shout. Well, first round I'll shout. You want Louisa? No, thanks. Jeff. Tanya. Oh, I'm a bit tired up. How about you, Seb? Oh, yeah, um, maybe. I'm just going for a smoke. I might meet you down there, eh? Is it my breath? down to the gate. Don't go onto the road. Give Daddy a surprise. I bet he's nearly home. I don't want to. I thought you might want to tell him what a good boy you've been, Mikey, before I tell him the truth. Go on. Is he home yet? Stall him. I've got to get home before he does, Mum. I don't know, I don't know, send him to the dairy or something? I, I just need to get home before he does, Mum. He'll go bloody ballistic, Mum. I don't know, 15 minutes? There by the tree house. See it? Can you see its horns? Hasn't got horns. Has got horns. Look. See its red eyes. I'm gonna tell Dad on you. Come on. Come on, boys and girls, I'm meeting Julie. That legal aid report in the morning, Tanya? Uh, yes, boss. I'm locking up. Come on, it's way up to five. Jeff, I've got to get my coat and sports bag. Hang on a minute. Gosh.
It was a bloody earthquake, Louisa. I think it was the big one. Just stay calm, Dizzy. I am fucking calm. I haven't got my mobile. Has anyone got a phone that's working? My mobile's not working. Fucking typical. Jesus. How am I supposed to... Pete! Pete! Okay, listen. <coughs> Roll call. Roll call. Come on, Louisa. Who's here? I am. Hey! Hang on, Bess. Turn that thing out. There could be gas. Hey! Are you here, Pete? Okay, quiet, everyone. Here's the drill. I'll I'll call your name and you are uh, just answer. Just answer. Tanya? I said yes. Are you okay? Yes. We have thanks. to get out of here. Jeff? I'm fine. I'm just a bit shaken. Warren. It's by the desk. I can't move, there's something on my legs. Stay where you are for now. Dizzy. Present, miss. Anyone else? Okay. I need to get together. I need to. Safety limits. Do a muster. Muster by, by the back wall, near the lifts and stairs, okay? It's the strongest part of the building. We're, we're here. We're, we're here already. We're by the lifts. Okay. Follow the light. I can't move. We interrupt this program to bring you a breaking news story. There has been a major earthquake felt throughout much of New Zealand, but believed to be centred in the Wellington area. We have no contact with our newsroom or reporters in Wellington. Landlines are down. Cell phone towers are presumed destroyed. We also believe power is out. Stay with us while we find out exactly what has happened. I wouldn't do that, mate. There's petrol everywhere. My old man's gonna kill me. He doesn't know I've got his truck. What am I gonna do? What am I supposed to do? I can't call. Oh, I forget can't... your bloody tank. There's poor bastards here that are hurt. Oh, the whole place could... <laughs> well, do you know first aid? What am I supposed to do? I don't know. Just, just check it out. Make them comfortable. Do your best, all right? Tracy? <laughs> Is she okay? Uh, yeah. She's gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. She's, she's gonna. She's gonna be alright. She's gonna. Help me! 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 Help
don't waste your battery. Who is it? Oh, it's me. I can hear Warren. Warren! It's Tanya! Over here! I'll see if I can get to her. Oh. stuff over me. There's something across my legs. <sighs> Louisa's holding a meeting. Good on Louisa. Yeah, yeah. She's back there a bit. I can't get there. Can you feel that? No. None of us can move in here. Hang on. It's a bit damp. Bloody water bottle. But what do till they get here? Go back and see Louise. I'll be back. We don't know how many people are able to receive this broadcast. What we do know is this. Power to Auckland and the North Island is fluctuating. We're now broadcasting using our emergency generator. We've managed to get in touch with the backup duty officer from GNS in Wairaki, Rex Hiles. He tells us that an earthquake of 8.2 magnitude with its epicentre in the Cook Strait has been felt from Hamilton to Christchurch. Rex joins us live now from Wairaki. What else can you tell us about this earthquake? Hi Alex, now this earthquake occurred along the Wairarapa fault line. Now to put this in perspective, this has released five times more energy than the Napier earthquake of 1931. That earthquake measured 7.8 on the Richter scale, and uh, 256 people lost their lives due to that quake. Rex, thank you. Uh, due to a lack of communication, we're still unable to tell you exactly what damage it's caused or if there's any loss of life. We have had some people call in on cell phones from the Picton area and from the Manawatu, but no contact whatsoever from Wellington itself. Wave. Oh, I knew we should have had practices. A, a what? A tsunami. Uh, well, that's all we bloody need. Okay, you're our emergency guy, Louisa. What do we do for tidal waves? Go up. Ah, up bloody where, Louisa? Higher. And what's your language, Dizzy? Higher? There is no up as far as I can see. So we stay put. No. No, I'm, I'm going down. Bit sitting around here and hoping. You hear that? I'll, I'll go down and, and, and get them up here. Go down the stairs. Can we all, can we all go, Pete? I 
can get one. Oh, come with you, Dizzy. Okay. Okay. Come too. We're going down. We'll be back soon, Ed. Someone will. I I'd give you the torch, but. <laughs> Me out, but I think I'm okay. You're on comms. Oh this is Wellington Emergency Management Office. Is there anyone there? Fire comms. Fire comms. This is Wellington Emergency Management Office. Angela Flight. Do you copy? Over. This is the controller. I've just arrived. Victoria. We're on standby. Mount Victoria. Copy. Emergency management office. Does anyone copy? Yes, Mount Victoria. You and I are it, Janice, and it could be a while. Slowly, please, Mount Victoria. Can I have a sit? Really, this please? is Wemo. This is Wemo. Kilburnie Civil Defence. Okay, I will pass that on. Thank you. Kilburnie Civil Defence. Okay, this, this is Wemo. This is Wemo. Do you copy? Over. Wellington Emergency Management Office. Oh. Come on! Can you please repeat that? Rory. Thank you. Thank you. Rory. Can I have a sit break, please? Kilburn, Civil Defence. Hello, this is Wemo. Thank you. Yes. No, would you repeat just that, please? Set up your seat thank you, yes, Rory. Thank you. Okay, thank I can't you. hear you there, Newlands 2. Can Slowly, you please, please just How many? slow down, Newlands 2? I understand. And are there any appliances? Right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Continue. On hand. And which roads are there? That? That? I understand. Okay. Slowly, Slowly Kilburn. Yeah. I can get back to the kids. Should I lock the car? Help me. Oh, just leave it in there. Help me. Someone want to move it. How, for how long? Help. Uh, are, are you okay? No. You okay? I, I can't move. <laughs> I'm out of here. We'll get a free up. I'll, I'll get a bar or something. Yeah? <laughs> Bay. And Courtney Place. It's not ordinary flooding. I've got Thornton. Thornton says that seas come right up into the motorway. It's bloody huge. They've got five dead. Well, let's do it calmly and then we'll do it well. Mm -hmm. Carry on, please. Thornton's over. Sorry, please slow down. Who's the health report? Set out, but it hasn't arrived. I'm getting reports in there of a. Tsunami, a wave of six to eight metres, some are saying ten. Airport's out. Here it comes. Oh! <laughs> 
Just like we lost that boy. <laughs> Come on, you mango. <laughs> And while we still have no direct link, landlines and cell phones are still out. We do have radio phone contact now. From Wellington, our reporter Gary McLaren. Alex, a massive tsunami has just hit the Wellington region. I'm going to repeat that. It's a huge tsunami and it has just hit the Wellington region. The damage is incredible. Waves have come right up into the business district. Destroy Gary? Well, we appear to have lost contact with our reporter in Wellington. As you can see, our communication with the area is tenuous. We'll be back in touch with Gary as soon as we can. But just to repeat, a massive tsunami has struck the Wellington area. Tell them where we What's are. What's that they didn't get out? What's that they didn't get out and no one knows? Jeff, it's a bit early to be giving up. We've got 24 hours, maybe 48. We've got time. We're not going anywhere. So just sit and wait. Well, have you got a better idea? I vote we have someone with Warren all the time. He's, I don't think... One, one thing at a time, people. Um, first thing, stock taking. Stock taking? Jeff, I was appointed... You volunteered. Okay. You're the supervisor. You want to take over? Cool. Just get your shit together and show some leadership for a change. God, you Louisa. There are people's lives at risk here. What would you like to do, Jeff? I'll carry on here, yeah, Hitler. Pretty, hey. We take stock. Water, food, warmth. Light. There's a bottle at the water cooler half full. And there'll be water in the toilets too if we can get to them. Drink from the dunnies. I will be gone by the time. What do we do when we want to take a crap? We need to work out what to do with our body waste. Oh, for God's sake, Louisa. Well, that still plate has been taken off. We need to isolate ourselves from the... From I'm taking over for Vicky Cotter. She's dead. I'm, I'm very sorry to hear about your colleague, Health. Now, I need a sit report from you as soon as you can, and that's your station just over there. Thank you. Wait, wait, can you I need to get out of some point to tell her husband she was a friend. Yeah, it'll be taken care of. But now that you're here, you're here. And I need that report as soon as possible. Thanks, Helen. Look, if it's too hard for her, would you get a replacement, please? Because she is no good to us the way that she is now. Oh, yeah, Angela. Okay. Yeah. Rupert. How's the mayor? She signed the paperwork, I think. You think? Well, I'll be declaring. Civil defence emergency. So you're in charge of the city, Angela, and uh, I suspect we're close to a state of national emergency. Mitch. Uh, half the centres around the country have activated. It seems they're ready to help, but... Um, look, I've, I've got to go, so... Uh, I will want to see... Good luck. Police, fire, roading, housing and health uh, in the control room in ten minutes, and I want an interim overview from each of them, and I want you in there with me. Sure. There's not room enough for both of us, mate. There's only room for me. Cold. Freezing. Hang on to Einstein for a bit. Uh, he'll warm me up. It's mighty his back leg, he gets a bit sleepy. What'd you call him Einstein? Uh, he's the brains of the outfit. doing law. Yeah? Run by crooks for the crooks. No. Keeps things honest. Keeps people in order. Protects property. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't stop you stealing daddy's car. Fuck off. You finished with that dog, have you? No.
didn't feel that one before. Knocked me off my feet. Dizzy and Bess have gone to get help. You can hear things down on the road, so it won't be long now. I wish I could do more. <gasps> Kia ora, good morning. A summary of what we know 14 hours after the major earthquake that struck Wellington. The earthquake measured 8.2 and occurred at 5.15pm. The tsunami arrived 13 minutes later. Overnight, a national state of emergency has been declared. Also overnight, aftershocks have continued. The biggest at midnight measured 7 in magnitude and the widespread panic that had occurred earlier in the evening began again. Structural damage to buildings was again extensive and there are massive landslips throughout the greater Wellington region, blocking key arterial routes like Nauranga Gorge and the Hutt Motorway. The city is completely cut off. We have managed to establish a satellite link with two crews in Wellington. Here's the first of our live reports from Midiyama King in the Newtown area. This is just one of a number of fires currently raging in inner city suburbs such as Thorndon and the Adol Valley, where there are larger amounts of older wooden houses. The timing of the quake at 5.15pm meant that there are a lot of gas cookers and heaters in use and some gas lines exploded. Fire crews can't get around the city and there have been a lot of situations overnight that I've seen where a fire that has started in one house has destroyed a whole block of houses. Some people have done a great job putting out individual fires and of course down by the harbour where the tsunami came through there have been fewer fires. I gather that you are virtually trapped in Newtown? Yes. We certainly didn't feel as though we could move around much last night but the plan is now to set out for the downtown area. We'll be on foot, we'll be carrying our portable satellite equipment, so we may take some time. Thanks, Midiyama, and take care. We'll hear back from Midiyama when she reaches the CBD. As mentioned, we're still unable to make contact with our reporters in downtown Wellington. Civil Defence have requisitioned all helicopters in the lower North Island. Apparently, there are a number of buildings that have come down. Many others are extensively damaged. We have got some pictures captured and sent out of the effect of the quake and tsunami. In the greater Wellington area, we have no idea how many people have been killed, injured or are missing as a result of the original quake, let alone the tsunami, fires and aftershocks. Estimates, though, range from 500 to 1,000 dead. You're too wound up in yourself. I've got to get some clothes. Oh, your priorities are screwed. Think about the animals of the zoo. I we'll have to shoot them. You can't have tigers to ship wandering. Well, I didn't think about that. No, I know. That's what I mean. For the boys over the jail, I'll be shooting them too. I don't think so. You calling me a liar? No, of course not. Can I carry Einstein? Yeah, all right. Where is he? Is it full? About half. You'll never move her. I don't want to lose her in the next shake. Lost the chimney in the last one. You got a tarp? Yep. I'll tell you what, me and me mate will cover the hole. After breakfast? Where's your mate? Oh, he's a bit shy. Give us a hand. Give us a lift. Ready? Took me all morning to tidy the house. Yeah. Yeah. Should do. Police, how's the CBD? That's not good. Uh, still, lots of the buildings and streets are very dangerous. There's a lot of flooding. Uh, we're still trying to get a clearer picture of which parts of the city have been worst affected. But we do have good numbers on the ground and the rescue teams are being supported. Okay, roading. Yep. How many gangs have you got out? 
Uh, Fulton Hogan have one gang in the now. They've got another gang headed towards Adelaide Road to clear through to the hospital. Priority? We need to get all 15 gangs out as soon as possible. Clear through the quay so we can get across town. Motorways? The overbridges are down. Uh, the airport's out and so are both tunnels. You keep me informed. Next 24 hours are crucial. Okay, housing. How much pressure? Uh, a lot in the south. They're flooding into schools and churches already. Plan for displaced persons accommodation? Yeah, we're thinking 10,000. You better make it 20,000 housing. Get started, get cracking. Right, health. Hands for the dead. We commandeer refrigeration trucks. No, no, no we, it's going to take us three days, maybe, maybe five days before you can even get across town. And I don't think we've got enough refrigerated trucks in the whole of the country. Mass grave. Really? It's not on the plan, but if the numbers keep mounting, we might have to consider it. OK. Um, talk to police and the coroner's office, and you are to keep this idea quiet. Mitch, I want you to talk to Christine. And we need more body bags. Get them. Right, fire. Let's talk about New Town and Mount Vic. Let's see if we can get these fires under control. Well, access is pretty much impossible. I mean, I've got water issues. I've got none. Excuse me, have you seen this man? His name's Ward. He's my husband. Excuse me, have you seen this man? Have you seen this man? His name's Ward. He's my husband. No, 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 sorry. Now, what have you brought with you? I've got nothing. Well, first of all, I need you to. Sorry. Alice. Alice, wait for me. This is a civil defense message. Please thank you. How did you know where to find us? Of course he'll find us. You know, Daddy. Hello. There's a spot for you over there. Okay, thank you. Come on. I think we can go with you as well. This is a civil defence message. Please stay tuned for further announcements. It's like Newtown on fire. Yeah? God, the house shook itself like a wet dog. What'll you do? Stay put. What'll you do? Just thinking about that. Got a wife? This is a civil defence message. Please stay tuned for further announcements. Suit you. Oh, my brother's got a kid. I gave it to his missus. Uh, my brother was a dry wolf, couldn't give her one, so I said I would. Jeez, it made us all pretty close. <laughs> Good on you. I don't get it. I think he's in shock. A whiskey might help. Then we'll do that tarp for you. Come in, please. Come on. Come on in, come on. Take a seat here. You had a hard time, mate. I was on the motorway. Yeah, us too. You want some food? Please. What about a cup of tea? Thank you. Crossing now live to Erin Weston, our reporter who is up on the Kilburnie Hill. Alex, I'm standing overlooking Kilburnie and Lyle Bay. From here, you can look back across to what was the airport and towards Seatoon and Miramar. 
Now, as you can see, the airport has been severely damaged. That's along with large parts of Lyle Bay, where many of the seafront houses have just virtually vanished. While many of the airport buildings are still standing, air bridges, planes and vehicles are littered everywhere. It's just a scene of destruction on the ground down there. There are cracks in parts of the runway and the whole area is covered with sand. Flights have had to be rerouted to Palmerston North. Erin, you're a Lyle Bay local. Can you tell us how you are holding up? Alex, it's uh, really quite something to be uh, experiencing an earthquake in your own hometown and then covering it like, like this. Also, I haven't been able to get close enough to my house to see quite what the level of devastation is, although I know a number of the houses in the street that I live in have been dis uh, just devastated. The water went right through there and despite all the water, there's a number of fires, there are uh, structures that are unsafe, there are people staggering around in shock. I'm just going to have to go down uh, as soon as I'm allowed into the area to see what the uh, devastation has done to where I live, but my, my family is safe and that's, uh, that's really all that I'm worried about at this stage. How about the other suburbs we can see in the background, Miramar and Seatoon? How are those people faring? Well, at this stage, Seatoon and Miramar are completely cut off and boat access is impossible. And all the boats at marinas, like at Evans Bay, have either been ripped from their moorings and have disappeared or they've been destroyed by the tsunami. Uh, now, earlier, before we climbed up on this hill, we were down on this side of the Mount Victoria Tunnel, which has collapsed. Now, as you can see, this one driver has had a miraculous escape. The tunnel is uh, apparently also blocked in at the other end, but we just don't know what the situation is in the middle or how many people are trapped inside. Look, this just couldn't have happened at a worse time. It was rush hour when the earthquake struck, uh, so inevitably there were a number of people inside the tunnel, but whether they're alive or dead at this stage, we just have no idea. Yeah, look, I haven't got anyone I can release at the moment. I mean, it's hard enough getting someone across the road, let alone across town. Well, you're just going to have to rejuggle your resources because... I'm from Miramar. I've heard the reports coming in. It's not looking good out there. No, it's not. I'm sorry. There's fire in Miramar. Yes, there is. And in Berenpour, Newtown, CBD, Mount Cook. You will have seen all the reports coming in. It's very hard to take. You're not sending any appliances over our way? No. Limited appliances and no access. My wife. We live in Tahi Street near the shops. It's a block of flats, three story. It just, it just can't leave from there to die. I'll sort this. Thanks, Mitch. Fact no access. Waves swept across Lyle Bay and the airport. Cotton drives out for at least two days, probably three. We had three fire appliances destroyed in Kilburnie, which makes a total of eight so far around the city. We don't have the manpower. It was a difficult decision to make, but it had to be made. Do you have family out there? Did you check your family before you came in here? I was in town. I came straight here. Well, there's a first rule. Check your family. And if it's any help to you, I didn't check mine either. And I don't have anything to offer you except that I am do we, we are doing the best that we can. Had to ask. Yeah, you did, you did. Look, it's a national emergency now anyway. Resources should be pouring in. Did you get me, Christine? You should take a break. You're saying that I'm not managing, Mitch? You're well past your hours. You'll drop if you don't take a break. I can manage. I've had a break. Take four hours, six if you can. Christine first. Angela. Hey. Now, there are a couple of what I would call alarm and despondency issues. So, when you talk to the media, we have not abandoned Miramar, Seatoon and Berenpore, and we are not digging mass graves, and we do not expect the death toll to get above 10,000. Well, we've got good cooperation so far. Well, may it last. 
the media are on our side at the moment, but realistically, it won't last forever. Television news crews are getting to places that we can't. In a few days, things will change. I can't see past a few days. A few days will suit me fine. <laughs> Mitch, I'm going to shut my eyes down below. And uh, you wake me. Things get worse, yeah? You okay? You okay? You alright, mate? No. Tired? No. Do you want to lie down? I'll, I'll ask the lady. No, um, it's in my, it's in the car. There's something wrong with, what was your name? Badge. What? Badger. I'm diabetic. He's diabetic. You need insulin. It's in my car on the motorway. He needs a doctor. Well, don't look at me. He's a lawyer. No doctor, no insulin. He'll die. Oh, you seen the motorway? We'll never find his car. It's fucking totaled. We need a chemist shop. Nearest one's Johnsonville Cross Country. We can't walk to Johnson. Hey. Uh, okay. I suppose we could. Where's your car? It's the... Is Daddy home? Not yet. Not yet. Is he going to bring Michael? Go back to sleep. OK, go back to sleep. What are we going to do? I want to go home. Oh, Daddy will know what to do. OK, go back to sleep. I'm awake and watching, OK? Miriama Kingi has now managed to get from Newtown to downtown Wellington. And Miriama, I understand it's taken you several hours. Yes, Alex, and the scene behind me will give you some idea of why. These buildings in McGinnity Street are still standing, but nearly every single sheet of glass has come out and most of it seems to have fallen onto the street. Under this glass, a number of people have literally been cut to ribbons. Rescue services have labelled this one of their no-go zones and I understand that they have no expectation that anyone who was on the street at the time could have survived the falling glass. We've been talking to rescue workers. It's another one, Mike. Oh. As you can see, aftershocks are still being felt throughout the city. And now using our satellite system, we've got some more shots from reporter Gary McLaren. This footage is of the harbour this morning. The tsunami carried extraordinary amounts of sediment, rendering berths unusable and effectively closing the harbour to shipping. There's obviously an enormous amount of chemical pollution that we can see throughout the harbour. It's come from the gas and oil reservoirs at Seaview, which have been severely damaged by the quake. Another problem apparently in downtown Wellington is access to the hospital in Newtown and even out to the hut in Kenapuru hospitals. Some seriously injured people are being carried to the Newtown Hospital through the streets. Hut Hospital has been seriously affected by the tsunami, sweeping up the Hutt River and across. And while Kenapuru Hospital in Porirua is apparently still functioning, access from Wellington and the Hut is impossible. We also understand that the hospital is swamped with cases from the Porirua Basin, and in particular from Mana which has virtually disappeared after the tsunami.
dead weight, Patch. Oh, hang in there, man. How do we know that the pharmacy's gonna be open? We don't. Or that Johnsonville's gonna be open? Just gotta put your trust in something, boy. Otherwise, you wouldn't get out of bed in the mornings. Yeah, but do you know if the pharmacy's gonna be open? No! Just like I didn't know I was gonna end up with some pussy who stole his father's car and leaves it to a lady to do the bloody work. Excuse me, take over. I shouldn't have to tell you, boy. the children. You'll be all right. It's over. What do you know? You know nothing. Have you seen this man? His name is Ward. He's, he's my husband and he didn't come home. No, I haven't. Sorry. You see, you know nothing. What will you do when you find him? I'll tell him. What will he do? He'll hold me. Would it be helpful if I held you? No. You're not, you're not Ward. I could still hold you. Just for a moment. What do you want? I just want to be able to hold someone. <laughs> we don't have much water. Are you thirsty? W water's like gold, can you spare it? I am thirsty. <laughs> Listen, mate, um, I think you've had an accident in your pants. Sorry. I, I thought I should Have say... I? Sorry. Oh, that's no big deal. Look, I can clean it up for you. Okay. Um, just... 
wanted to let you know. I don't think you should just... It won't be long. Thanks, Dad. Dizzy and Bess haven't come back yet. Jeff and Louisa are trying to clear away to the stairs. You won't leave me, will you? No. Of course I won't. Going. Go on, you'll have to hurry. Go on, you might find a car. Come on. You'll be right. You'll be fine. Just hurry. I'll be back in no time. You're fat. You play league? Nah. You? Nah. Never found the time. A dance. The cha 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 and shit. Yeah. You had me on. Nah. Police. 
got reinforcements standing by in Auckland and Christchurch and some in Hastings, but until we get enough transport, we can't get them through. Do I hurry till tomorrow? Looks like we have to. Yes, police, it does. Fire. Things looking any better? The appliances we have left are all tied up in the CBD. Still can't get through to Berenpore. Can't get through to Newtown. Still can't get through to... We may have to let older Wellington burn. Well, surely we can get water there somehow. I mean, we're, we're monsoon buckets. There's what? not enough choppers available. The road gangs are a full stretch. All right, well, come on, peoples. Come on, we need ideas, ways of stopping old Wellington from burning. Yeah, when is access going to be available? Well, first of all, there's such an enormous amount of human suffering in the property destruction. It's unrealistic for us to put any estimate on that. Well, you must have some idea of how many people are dead. Are we talking hundreds, thousands? Tens of thousands. I, I'm sorry, it's just too early to say. And realistically, our priority is with the injured. We would ask that if people are not seriously injured and they have some food and water supplies, that they remain where they are. Our message to them is that help is on its way. Soon? Soon. Uh, realistically, for uninjured people, we are hoping that they can survive without help for a few days. We have to operate to a set of priorities. But 24 hours after the earthquake, does anyone have any real handle on the scale of this disaster and what's happening on the rescue front? Health. Where do I start? Uh, well, we're still not through to Wellington Hospital yet. Road isn't clear. We have temporary field hospitals in Karori and Tower operational and a new one being erected at Massey Campus in Mount Cook. It should kick in by tomorrow. Well done. We desperately need an access road through town, around the harbour. Well, come on, Roden. It'll be 24 hours at least. There's nothing I can do. That's all the resources I have. I was going to drown down there on the motorway and all I could think was that I'd never get to have sex. You know what I mean? I said your priorities were fucked up. Let's get that insulin. the power's off in the middle. Proof. Chemist. Down the back. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm standing on the Wellington side of this barrier, which is on a side road just in from Otaki. All roads leading to Wellington from here and across to Featherston and the Warrapa have been closed and checkpoints are being maintained by police with help from the army and the civil defence. No one is getting through. No relatives of people beyond the blockade, no media. Earlier, there was an altercation when the gates were opened briefly to allow a family to leave. Emotions are running high with people wanting to enter the zone to find friends and family members. Many of these people, as you can see, are distraught but the authorities are saying look they just cannot cope with extra people in the zone there has been some exceptions people with skills or experience in areas such as earth moving building construction they are being allowed in they've been rescued or assigned to rescue teams but if it's felt they're on a personal mission then they're just not being allowed in I can fit through that. Yeah? Here's the lift.
Shut up, you mongrel. Who's going to hear? Don't talk to him like that. Hypodermics too. Needles. I hate needles. Where is the staff? By the fridge. That's where my dad keeps his heart stuff. Yes! Got it! We're coming, Badge. Hey. <laughs> Well deserved. You've been on deck for a while now. What's it like out there? I mean, I say, you know, clear this, get that, dig a hole, make it bigger, build a tent city here, build another one there. And well, they do it, I don't know, I suppose they do it. <laughs> What's it all add up to? We save Wellington? Well, um, what could be saved? Uh, you, you've saved. Have you been out? Have you seen it? No, no, I'm too much of a coward. I'd rather stay shut away in here. <laughs> well, the relief effort's really stepping up now. And the, um, the Aussies, they've promised us a massive amount of support. Are you tipping me out of my chair, Rupert? Don't be silly. You know what the mayor thinks of you. Everyone's in awe. Yeah, well, there's a very big but in there, uh, but... We've got more resources now, Angela. And gives you a chance to get the rest you need. Well, I'll sleep over tonight and I'll be right as rain tomorrow. Two days, Angela. We want you to hand over to the second controller for two days. Oh, Rupert, what on earth would I do? Please, no, no. please. Two days. Orders of the sea. to be the boss, looking after his workers. Look at him. Jeff, look after us. Leave me alone. I'm sorry, uh, bastard. You curled up there like a little maggot. What do you want me to do? Look after us. Take charge. Think. What a... I never thought I'd be drinking water out of a toilet. Listen. It's someone. They're here. We're in here! All together. Shout again, Jeff! The death toll from the Wellington earthquake rose today when two men were shot after breaking into a suburban pharmacy. 
believed that the men were searching for drugs and were shot by a local vigilante. While police say that looting has been rare in the aftermath of the disaster, apparently the vigilante was patrolling the shopping area after an appliance store had been broken into. Police have not yet released the names of the victims. Both were Caucasian males. Thank you. You want to go home? They, they want to register you first, then medical. Have you seen... Keep coming, thank you. When it's gone, it's gone. That's what we said when we finished the biscuits. It's getting smelly in here. What about Warren's cup? He's dead. Can't be sure, Louisa. Fair shares, come on. I'm gonna fight that bastard's achievement bonus. You and me, Tarn, we, we carried him all the way. Behind me is a site I think most New Zealanders associate with third world countries. In this undisclosed location, very close to central Wellington, a mass grave has been dug. A lack of power and even diesel has meant the initial decision to fly in refrigerated containers wasn't feasible. Fear of disease has resulted in this mass burial site. Authorities are refusing at this stage to say how many will be buried here, but it's our understanding that it will be at least a thousand. This site was chosen because it's well above the water table. Around two thirds of the bodies being buried here have been identified, 
but of course relatives aren't able to attend their burials because movement in and around the Wellington region has been severely restricted. A number of dental experts and the police are involved with bagging and storing personal effects, including jewellery. Where a body has not been identified, it's photographed and then a toe tag placed upon it so that it can be ID'd later if it's exhumed in a year or so. I want to go home. Home's where? You're from... Lyle Bay. I'm sorry. Why? Oh, well, I know that Lyle Bay had a terrible time. We were there. You can't know. Well, I'd like to know. Can you tell me? The children were outside. I'd sent them out. Go and tell your father. The water came and I can't. I want to go home. There are things. There are things I have to do. La Bay is a restricted area. It's closed off. I'm sorry. I just want to go home. Look, I really need to get some details from you. Um, can you give me your full name? Well, ha have you got any ID on you? No. Oh. Well, what's your name, love? Um, Joe. Joe. OK, good. And what about you? Alice. Alice. All right. Alice who? Alice Nelda. Alice Nelda. All right, Alice. And Joe Nelda. It's a good start. You know, they're always saying all, all hopes of finding more survivors are. And then someone shouts, it's a miracle. And they dig you out with their bare hands. And you smile and give a wave. It'll be you and me. You smile and I'll wave, eh? Yeah. I know you're dead. It helps to talk. Put 
Dr. Cap over here. Live now with a press conference being held by Wellington City CEO Rupert Stalker and the WeMo Media Liaison Officer Christine Fox Duggan. Afternoon, everybody. Questions? Uh, yes, Christine. Can you tell us um, what are, what's the situation with communications in and out of Wellington at the moment? Over half the city now has cell phone coverage, and there are isolated spots where landlines are working. But there is still no power to the city at all. Christine, Christine, any estimate yes. of when the power will be restored? We hope to begin getting power in soon, uh, but to be realistic, the supply will be erratic for months. <laughs> what about water and waste? We are getting some water in, and we will be beginning to pipe water from outside into low-lying collection points. But those in higher areas will have to come down a bit to collect it. So, so is waste a concern in terms of disease? Yes. But we are addressing that, and it will be part of the council's plans for what happens with Wellington over the next 12 months. 12 months? There are a number of high-level discussions going on right now as to whether it is feasible to rebuild Wellington as it was before this event occurred. Um, what? What is that? Please, 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 these discussions will take some time, and we need people to be realistic about this. However, look, people should know that we are doing everything we can on the ground to help them. In downtown Wellington, search and rescue teams are still recovering bodies. Seven days after the quake, some dangerous no-go areas like this one are now being searched thoroughly. It's a mostly painstaking and depressing job, but amazingly, as well as bodies, there are still people being found alive. This pocket of survivors were found in the Orcom Tower on McGinnity Street a building too severely damaged to allow floor-by-floor -floor searches. The alarm was raised when a white flag was seen jutting from the debris on the fifth floor. Dogs and abseilers have been used to recover at least four bodies and three survivors from the building. We had that shake the other day, four point something. It's a bloody flea bite. The big one was 8.2, but I just went rigid. I couldn't move, I couldn't breathe. Stiff as an ironing board in the middle of. It all came back. When I was in there, I didn't think about family. Block them out. Or I can kill you, I believe that. I'm thinking of moving to Aussie. If they don't get them there. Thinking about it. You know, she can be a rough little country, this one. All my workmates, Warren, and Louisa, bloody dizzy. 
this. But Jeff, he was the one. Jeff saved me. I mean, Jeff saved me with that bloody flag of his. But why me? I still don't know. I cleaned out the freezer. Well, had to. There's no power and had to eat the food. I cooked a turkey on the open fire. The chimney came down and the water tank shifted. Two men came out of the bush. They'd been washed up by the tsunami on from the motorway. Took the clothes fear off their back. I couldn't see the motorway. They, they told me it was totaled. Fucking total, Frank said. <laughs> we were friends there for a while. Sorry, some of it's private. You don't know a bricky, do you, who could fix my chimney? God, they're like hen's teeth now. I found Mikey by the tree house. And I buried him down there. When they came to take the other dead people in the area, I didn't tell them. He was mine. I had my insurance filed within the month. They said, get it in, we'll look after it, so I did. The assessor came out, they paid the money so we can rebuild. But so he doesn't want to leave Michael and I'm not living down by the sea. I don't trust it anymore. We're in bloody limbo. Just, I just want things back how they were. But they won't be. People ask us how we manage. Well, you're here, aren't you? What choice have you got? I can't do this thing. Well, I loved Wellington before the biggie, and I still love Wellington. I always have. It's a, you know, it's like a love affair. You don't always know why, you just do. I love the way that people walk up Cuba Street and their bare feet and jandals, and I love the mix of the hills and the houses, you know. And, and wherever I was away, I, I, I couldn't wait to get back again. It's a bit of a crappy landing, but, you know, home. We always thought of it as our city. Our city. That, you know, that was small enough, but big enough, and it was our houses and our hills. And but it's like it's been... Um, been hurt it's, it's been um, and we all lost friends and we lost property um, lovely big old wooden government building and old St Paul's and so much and we thought that it wouldn't happen here <laughs> happened before though 1855 and we rebuilt, stronger, bigger, taller. But I do think it was a terrible mistake to move government to Auckland. Well, I've been with the council now for 10 years. So when they asked me what I thought, I said, yeah, sure, we could do it. Best place, really. Actually, it's quite peaceful up here. Uh, those we could identify, we did, through dental records, next of kin, jewellery, DNA records. And um, that'll continue when they're exhumed. People ask me, how many? 
I look at it like this. Those people were whānau and friends of all of us. You can't put a number on whānau or friends or their kids. We're just looking after them until they're given their final resting place. It's been an honour, really.